Good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome to this planning meeting tonight. I just wanted to mention that uh, uh, for the benefit for the public on my uh, right hand side, uh, uh, Jack Robert uh, is a officer tonight here to help us as a democratic officer on my left hand side, Alex Jackson, planning uh, development manager and on the other side, Tawheed Islam, who is our legal advisor for this committee. On my right hand side, objectors, applicant, counselors, and MP today, uh, they are there. On my front, these are the members of the planning committee who are making debate and making decision tonight. On my left hand side, the planning officers uh, presenting uh, uh, the, the planning application, and uh, they are here to, to support and explain whatever planning uh, agenda is. So. <clears throat> Apologies. Um, I believe those the speakers in the room uh, are here and that they are on. I don't think those that come on. Uh, Victor, can, can you hear clearly what I'm saying? Yes. Um, yes. Yes. It's always been on in the past, ever, ever since I've been coming here for 36 years. Right, I understand that, and and at the moment, uh, Linda will be calling technical officer. But uh, can you hear me all right, Victor? At the moment, I'll try to make louder my voice. Yeah, thank you. Right. So, apologies for absence tonight. Uh, there is only one apology uh, from Councillor uh, Kumar, but she is participating online. Mr. Kumar, you are there? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Right. Thank you very much. But as, as I mentioned you before, it, uh, thanks for participating online. But unfortunately, you, you, you can participate in discussion, but you can't vote. So, okay. yeah, thank you. Is there any urgent matter? Not in my knowledge. Any declaration of interest? Uh, Chair, I, I just wanted to say um, that I've had communication from uh, some residents and, and the local MP, but that's it. Thank you, Kosa Kumar. Is there any matter consideration in private? Not in my knowledge. Item fifth is we need to approve minutes, but we need to, in the correct record, we need to approve uh, two different minutes. So the, the minute of the meeting, which was held on 22nd of June, are we agreed on that minute? Thank you. And the second meeting we held on 20th of July, 20th of July, July planning committee meeting. Are we agreed on that? Thank you. On the side visit attendance, uh, apart from Councillor Louise Brent and uh, Councillor Mohammed, apologies. Apart from that, I think you were all presents. And John Ball, you were, sorry, John Ball, you, you were in Croatia. So yeah, accept your apologies. So three apologies and rest of the committee were present on that day. Okay, we have got only one item in the agenda today. 
Uh, but uh, on that point, uh, I just wanted to mention an uh, important bit. I'm aware the planning committee has been provided with commercial uh, arrangement between applicant and leaseholder. And this is important. Any monies offered to extension or continue to the occupations of the site is property law matter and should not be considered today for the purpose of making decision. As a polite reminder, the planning committee here is only allowed to take material planning consideration into their decision-making process, which has been highlighted by planning officers in their reports and in their briefing as well. We will follow the local uh, procedure today. Emma will give you the presentation. And after that, we will do the questions and answers, discussions, and vote. So Emma, hand it over to you, please. Thank you, Chair. All right. Thank you. Um, item one on your agenda is a proposal for the demolition. Too quiet. How's this? Is this better? Yep. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Item one on your agenda is a proposal for the demolition of an existing commercial building and the construction of a five-story hotel with two basement levels, ancillary ground floor cafe, restaurant, and workspace with associated public realm improvements. The recommendation presented to committee is to grant the proposal subject to conditions and uh, section 106 terms and contributions. The site is within the East Acton Neighborhood Center and has four commercial uses on site with one class B8 warehouse use to the rear. On ground floor at street level is an optician, a takeaway and a butcher's with, while on the first floor is the London Snooker Members Club. The existing building has no heritage designations, though the London Borough of Ham Hammersmith and Fulham, Old Oak and Wormhold Conservation Area sits across Old Oak Common Lane to the east. Along the other three site boundaries are residential and commercial properties with rear service access from Brazzy Avenue to the north. And it should be noted the site has a very high PTEL rating at 6A and is subject to a CPZ restricting parking. The proposed development would replicate the, the, the footprint of the existing building with an overall increase in height of 1.4 meters with the eaves increasing, increasing in height by four meters. The proposed building would be five stories high with two basement levels, 129 guest rooms, and a total height of 15.5 meters. The ground floor would open out onto the public footway for, with seating for a cafe, restaurant, workspace, and workspace, both indoors and outdoors. The formal consultation process involved the posting of 12 site notices and an advertisement in the Ealing Gazette. 98 responses were received with 97 objecting, including one from the Ealing Civic Society. This uh, should be noted as an increase uh, since the committee report was submitted at the beginning of August. Um, and uh, this is described in the briefing note provided. The key points of objection raised relate to the loss of the snooker hall and opticians, the overdevelopment of the site, the historic merits of the existing building, the impact on on the character and appearance of the site, the, um, of the, uh, the, the impacts on the character and appearance of the street scene, and the impacts on adjoining residential amenity. A full response to these objections can be found in the committee report, though they will be addressed throughout the presentation. 
Firstly, on the principle of development, it is acceptable when examining both the loss of the existing uses and the proposed hotel use at this location. Um, Firstly, the submitted snooker and pool needs assessment demonstrates compliance with policy S5 of the London Plan 2021, as it demonstrates there is adequate supply in the local and sub-regional level to absorb demand arising from the loss of the on-site facility. As such, its loss holds minimal weight within. Uh, additionally, the snooker hall falls under a class E use, which is not a protected community or sports use. As such, it holds minimal weight within the planning balance assessment. Um, and this is in accordance with the London plan and Ealing plan policies. Secondly, the London plan and GLA working paper 88 outline the need to deliver additional visitor infrastructure accommodation in London with a focus on town center locations with good public transport accessibility. Just wanted to note that the slides aren't moving, so we might want to just catch up a little bit. Apologies, they are moving on my screen. Since we had a pause, I've had a message that um, people are having difficulties logging in live on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Emma, one minute, yeah. Can we also put it onto a, a slide mode as well? It'd be easier to see. I'm just going to switch to slide mode. So, Goswan and I have been told that YouTube is working and, and the slides were working on, on YouTube, but we will do it again. Um, just to, to raise, I can change the screens when it's not on slide mode, but when it, I put it onto slide mode, you can no longer see it. Is it all right if I keep it off slide mode? Apologies to, to go back slightly. Here we have the slide that looked at the site description. Oh. Um, this again shows that the proposal is located in the East Acton Neighborhood Center with the four commercial uses on site and outlines the PTAL and CPZ rating um, indicated before and that there are no heritage designations. Here we have the existing and proposed um, buildings superimposed on top of each other. The proposed development to, to reiterate is uh, 1.8 meters higher in total, uh, four meters higher um, it, at the eaves and would be five stories high, two basement levels and a total of 15.5 meters high with the cafe and restaurant and workspace on ground floor. Here we have the points on the consultation process and the key objections. And back to the principle of the development. Um, again, outlining the acceptability of the relocation strategy for the snooker assessment, as well as its classification as a class E commercial use, which is not a protected community and sporting use. Um, and again, where this is, my apologies where I, we ended, ended. Secondly, the London plan and GLA working paper outline the need to deliver additional visitor accommodation in London with a focus on town center locations with good public transportation accessibility. The LBE has a target of 2,234 additional rooms by 2041. The host site is located within a town center with a PTEL rating of 6A and is considered to be a pro an appropriate location for a hotel. Therefore, the principle of the development is acceptable as it would completely comply with local, the local development plan and the London plan. The um, 
existing building on site is from the 1930s, but has been significantly altered from its original state and as such does not have any noted significant historic or architectural merit. The proposed building would be of a high quality design and material and would be reflective of the material palette in the area. The proposed height, scale, and massing would also be reflective of the emerging context and would not result in harm to the old oak and wormhole conservation area. The proposed building would comprise a colonnade at ground floor level with the upper floor, while the upper floors would be set back and as such, the mass would be broken up through these setbacks, step ins and vertical and horizontal banding. The ground floor elevation would appear inviting and integrated within the street scene through an open colonnade, planting, clear glazing and outward facing benches. Uh, to go through these slides here, we can see comparisons of the all of the elevations with the existing building on the left and the proposed building on the right. Here we have the front elevation being viewed from Old Oak Common Lane. Here we have the north facing side elevation viewed from the rear gardens of one and three Brassy Avenue. Here are the rear elevations and here are the south facing elevations. Here we have two images demonstrating the proposed development with a, with, within its townscape context. The first image on the left shows the view looking north along Old Oak Common Lane, while the image on the right shows the view looking south. As you can see here, it appears well integrated within its townscape and very much in keeping with the surrounding street scene. Here we have floor plans, which we can return to if there are any questions later on, but this is the, these are the basement floor plans, which would be replicated on both levels. I'll draw your attention to the light wells along the side elevations. Here we have the ground floor plan and the upper floor plans on the left are the first, second and third floors, which are all replicated. The floor in the center and the roof plan showing PV panels and the green roof. The impact of the development on neighboring amenity has been assessed and it is accepted that there would be some loss of light to the adjoining residential properties, specifically to one and three Brassy Avenue. However, 93% of all tested windows across multiple adjoining addresses would comply with BRE guidelines for daylight and the harm is limited to non-habitable spaces and bedrooms, which have a lower or no expectation of light for in the BRE guidance. Additionally, the proposed flank wall would be would present a more visually uniform and setback facade for the rear amenity space at number one and number three Brassy in Avenue, while improving sunlight to the garden during su summer months and removing the disruptive plant equ equipment to the rear of number one Brassy Avenue. Here we can see this arrangement in the pictures on the top uh, right corner of the screen. Uh, this is taken from the rear amenity space of um, number one Brassy Avenue. This would, um, the proposed development would represent an improvement on this arrangement as it would provide a standardized traditional boundary treatment, would remove this plant equipment and would create a uniform blank wall which would additionally be set back in the central component. Mitigation measures for overlooking noise and light spillage have been successfully integrated into the design to prevent adverse harm to the amenities enjoyed by additional uh, by adjoining residential properties. For example, the cross section shown here in the bottom left corner of your screen uh, demonstrates the louvres that would be used within the windows to restrict views directly down and across into adjoining windows. Um, as well as the windows themselves, which would be inset within box uh, revels to restrict the ability of hotel guests, again, to look directly down or across into adjoining windows. To briefly summarize transport and access considerations, there's a predicted reduction in the private vehicle trips to the site uh, with primary access for servicing to the rear along the existing access road. Substantially, there will be improvements to the public realm along Old Oak Common Lane, improving the pedestrian experience and liveliness of the high street. The travel plan prioritizes active and public transportation options and uh, to take full advantage of the high PTEL rating. 123,000 pounds in Section 106 funding have been secured for improvements to surrounding transportation infrastructure with a focus on active transportation and road safety improvements. Finally, to uh, put forward three key additional considerations. There would be a site-wide CO2 emissions reduction by about 73.5% and, and an improved urban greening factor on site, which is currently zero as existing and would be 
um, as proposed through the proposed green walls, green roof, and front elevation landscaping, all compliant with the London plan. Additionally, there have been no identified undue flood risks as a result of the two-story basement, subject to pre-commencement conditions, and confirmed by Ealing's Flood Risk Management Council T. To conclude, the proposed development puts forward a high quality design which is harmonized with the street scene while anima animating the street frontage with public realm improvements. There will be reduced private vehicle trips and reduction in on-site CO2 emissions. The, the economic benefits include increased spending on the high street, 24 full-time jobs during the construction period and 40 full-time jobs during operation, all with a focus on local labor sources. Finally, the proposed development provides secure, safe, and high quality visitor accommodation. As such, the recommendation is for approval subject to conditions found within the committee report and section 106 contributions out, outlined here, uh, specifically these financial contributions, as well as an arrange of, arrangement of work experience opportunities, apprenticeships, and educational visits. Thank you, and I would like to draw your attention to the briefing note, which uh, shows the minor changes in these recommendations, specifically the highways and transport in, um, additions uh, in the first line of this chart, as well as um, uh, slight changes to condition number nine, the wording, and additional consultee comments that were, that were received after the committee report was submitted. Thank you. Thank you, Emma. Now we have got an uh, objector on this application, Mr. Vivek Kumar. Uh, Mr. Kumar, you have got, as officer mentioned, you have got three minutes to speak. And Thank you, Chair. Uh, and uh, your three minutes start from now. Thank you. And my name is Vivek Kumar. I'm a barrister and a member of London Snooker Club. Over 8,000 members of all ages and backgrounds from the local community come to the club to relax and spend time with their friends. It's a safe, calm, friendly environment, keeping kids off the street and providing older members of the community a place to socialise. Everyone needs, especially now, affordable places to go where they can play sports and meet others. The demolition of the club would have a massively negative impact on the community and the individual members of the club. Please see the objections made by over 100 people on the planning portal. I invite you to agree that these objections do outweigh any public benefits the hotel scheme may deliver. As the committee knows, the proposed development must be compliant with policy S5 of the London plan, which states that the existing recreational facilities should be retained unless an assessment has been undertaken, which clearly shows the facilities to be surplus to requirements at the local and sub-regional level. The needs assessment dated November 2021 is inadequate. The report has failed to follow the Sport England framework for carrying out assessments. In establishing the existing demand for snooker and pool, it has relied on generic data sets as re rather than, as recommended by Sport England, user surveys and the information about the exact membership of the club. There are thousands of members of the local community who use the club. In assessing alternative supply of sim similar facilities, the report has provided very inaccurate and misleading information when assessing travel time to alternative facilities. For example, the report says it takes 14 minutes to get from Acton to King's Cross. This is simply wrong. According to Google Maps, it takes 28 minutes by car and at least 45 minutes by public transport. All the other times about the other alternatives are similarly incorrect. In any event, the needs assessment does not show, let alone clearly show as required, that the facilities are surplus to requirement. The report mentions alternative places which have snooker or pool tables, but does not assess whether these are suitable alternatives to the club. London Snooker has 12 full-size snooker tables and nine pool tables. The alternatives are not comparable in size, with some of the alternatives only having a couple of tables. Some alternatives offer snooker, but not pool tables, and vice versa. Some, particularly 10 pin uh, in Acton, only offer small arcade-type pool tables in a very no noisy atmosphere aimed at children and young people. The only potential alternatives are in Victoria and King's Cross i.e. central London, and are not realistic, realistic options for members of the local community. Sorry. In conclusion, invite the committee to reject the application of planning permission to demolish this community asset, as the development is not compatible with policy S5. As an alternative, I ask for a deferral on the basis the committee has not been, has been asked to consider insufficient and incorrect information. This would allow a further needs assessment to be carried out 
which properly considers the views of users of the club and actually assesses the availability, availability and suitability of alternative facilities. And if the committee is minded to grant the application, I invite you to add a condition requiring the application to make a section, sorry, just one, one sentence, that one section 106 contribution towards local sporting amenity that will allow London time to, is... to continue their work in another location. Thank, Thank you. you. Sorry. Thank you, Mr. Kumar. Yeah, thanks very much. You know, I, uh, we've got uh, the applicant agent here as well, uh, Mr. Simon Flero. Yeah, as you know that, we have got three minutes, three minutes. to speak. Yeah. yeah, thanks very much. Good. And I will let you know when to start. Ready to start when you're watching. Yeah, <clears throat> ready. Thanks. Thanks. Members, thanks for your time. Um, said my name is Simon Fowler. I'm a planning consultant um, representing Cas Hotels. For the applicant, they're here this evening, and, and they're a small family run business uh, which has got owner operated hotels uh, in West London. So, so when we started this process, uh, we, we were looking at the site and we, we came to the same conclusion that's in the committee report that it's, a, it's an extremely suitable location for a hotel given proximity to the central line. You obviously, you've got the forthcoming Holdo Common Interchange. It's in the town centre, so it's quite actually preferential. And there's a real gap actually for uh, local and London wide uh, demand that this scheme is going to meet for uh, compact well designed rooms in sort of zone two locations, which actually challenge that. Um, central hotel offer. Um, so as the scheme progressed, the starting point is obviously looking at can we refurbish the property, but given the quality condition and the sustainable performance of the building to start off with and the access limitations, this clearly precludes the building retention. So throughout the pre-app process and the planning application, we've worked with officers. They provided some really helpful advice in terms of mass architecture and then ensuring the neighbouring um, amenities are protected. Um, we're obviously aware of um, the um, snooker hall's comments and we're happy to work with the, the tenants of the, um, the snooker hall to um, ensure suitable available uh, alternative facilities are found. Um, as the chair said, um, it's, um, it's, it's not a planning consideration, but to fill you in, there's obviously a part of this summary of proposals. In 2033, the lease is going to end, at which, which point the current tenant receives a £50,000 payment. And we've also suggested subsequently a bilateral legal agreement outside the planning process between the parties, which provides a further 15,000 to assist in the re relocation process. We're also going to suggest um, a further year's lease beyond June 2023, a current rental rates, which are a quarter of the market rate in order to help that transition and, and find the other premises that the objector um, suggested. So hopefully this should um, respond to the concerns. So taking it in, uh, in, in, a, in a conclusion, we're obviously happy that the, um, the application has been recommended for approval and, and thanks to officers in, in, in helping us through that process. And in balancing the application has a number of significant benefits, which not least is the significant extra spend, so £600,000 in the local community from the hotel users, the construction and operational jobs. So there's going to be um, 24 construction jobs minimum, and then we anticipate up to 45 full-time jobs in the proposed hotel. Um, the financial contributions that were set out in the table sets 330,000 significant contributions towards the local highway network, uh, local parks, and actually seeking to have local employment and skills opportunities. And, and ultimately, we're providing a sustainable and accessible development, which provides space for the local community to use and, and has a load of public realm enhancements. And we believe that it will lead to an improvement to the town centre and the local community. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Thank you, Mr. Fowler. Um, so, uh, very much on time now. Uh, um, and now we have got local councillor, councillor Kate Crawford. Uh, good evening. Councillor Crawford, good evening. You have Thank got you. five minutes. Uh, uh, but Thank you. I'll you don't necessarily it. go up to five minutes, but. No, but I'll try and use it well. Thank you. Good Thank evening, you. everyone. As uh, one of the, the councillors for East Acton, I speak this evening on behalf of the thousands of Acton residents who stand to lose a much loved. Uh, community facility if the recommendation before you in the report is passed by the committee. It is regrettable that the applicant has seen fit to go back on his word, word to the operators of London Snooker at the East Acton Arcade. And whilst I welcomed his response on ITV last night saying that he would provide alternative accommodation if the application was agreed, there is no section 106 reference to this commitment in the report before you, nor is, is there any section 106 for sporting um, activities. 
I would ask the committee to include within its section 106 agreement the compulsion of a contribution to local sport, as we have done with every development in East and North Acton over the past 12 years. The reason for this is simple. The report has tried to paint a picture of snooker as a sport in decline. It is lamentable that the council's sports strategy has not recognized the rise of snooker, pool and billiards locally during the pandemic. Something referenced by the world number 29, Jamie Jones in his own appeal to save this local facility, which he has used regularly and done some coaching. The report fails to recognize that the last World Snooker Championships attracted the largest UK television audiences for two decades, or the growth of the sport amongst the young over the past five years, as illustrated by UK sports participation figures and the data gathered by the English Snooker and Billiard Partnership and the World Profession Billiards and Snooker Association. The idea that local facilities exist to absorb the loss of a snooker club that has gone beyond the call of duty over the past two decades to offer our young Actonians an opportunity to hone their skills in a safe environment, which is local, with access to world-class coaching and an unrivaled array of quality tables and a cue shop is laughable. The report suggests it takes 15 minutes to drive to Southall or 35 minutes by car. And I know even the members of this committee realize that this is utter nonsense. Even if you managed this extraordinary feat and without a fine, the facility referenced within the papers is closed. The snooker needs assessment is out of date. Based on a verbal survey of operators from last November, no visits to the organizations, and ideally the committee would defer a decision on this application, hopefully until they had been presented with accurate information. The London plan specifies that planning authorities should only approve a removal of sporting facilities where there are appropriate local and sub-regional facilities to replace them. This is clearly not the case. The Riley's chain is again at risk of administration and none of the snooker clubs cited and some as far as away as Victoria and uh, North London provide access to high quality coaching such as um, at, at, at the snooker hall. Tables or even queues as the cherished community hub that councillors should be condemning, to, that could soon be condemning to the bulldozer. If the committee is minded to approve this application, I would simply request that they reaffirm the council's commitment both to sport and a brighter future for our young people by compelling the developer to live up to the word, their word and re-providing this excellent snooker either within the proposed hotel, there are two basements, remember, or at an appropriate site within Acton. And I do not believe the financial um, settlement um, is adequate uh, that you're, you're doing with uh, uh, the tenant. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Glossa Crawford. I uh, appreciate you for that. Uh, now we have got uh, Rupa Huck, local member of parliament. Uh, so Rupa, as you have mentioned, you have got three minutes to speak on that. Five. Oh, five minutes, sorry. Uh, uh, but I'm sorry about that, Rupa. Yes, you have got five minutes to speak here. Thanks, Mary. The East Acton Arcade on the Ealing Hammersmith Borough border might not be the most flashy or in the best nick, but it's been a local landmark since the 30s. And to replace it with an unsightly block-shaped hotel building, seemingly designed by Minecraft, 
would be would change, which could be anywhere, would change East Acton forever. And yards away, H&F Council, crucially, object to this application for its massing, its adverse effect on its conservation area just opposite, for its highways impact, and so do I. It's home to numerous thriving businesses, Halal Butcher, Optician, King Kebab, all of these services not immediately available elsewhere if you don't drive, all greatly valued by the local community. I spy opticians with a patient list of 3,000 locals. It's proprietor Mickey Khan. You might have seen him on ITV News last night. It's genuinely loved. He did home visits during COVID. But this application's had media interest because of London snooker, which ward councillors and I've experienced as a well-loved community, well-used hub, 8,000 members, affordable recreation. Now, the officer report misleadingly talks about generalised reduced demand for snooker and pool using outdated national figures, completely ignoring London snooker's use and unparalleled facilities. Uh, it points to a table here, a table there, but not comparable. So Park Royal, there's nothing like the high grade rare English table available at London snooker. It's the only one for miles. And one of the hundred objectors says comparing the small pub style tables in Tenpin with full size tables we have here is like comparing five aside football to the World Cup or, you know, comparing a slap up meal with a bag of crisps. While many facilities in London went over time, those remaining dotted around our capital are needed now more than ever for their communities and for the UK's competitiveness globally. Contrary to the officer report, snooker is expanding. Its television figures are at an all-time high, way outstripping those Steve Davis, Hurricane Higgins days. And that's remarkable in our multi-platform, multi-channel age. The stereotype of old smoky halls needs an update. This one survived the smoking ban. It survived the Luftwaffe. And um, Sport England has recognized snooker for the first time ever, because it's so on the up. The IOC rates it as a precision sport, like archery. And next door, there's the TCES special school where pupils are walked over by teachers at lunchtime to use it because it helps their coordination. It's a mixed gender sport and clubs are community hubs with coaches, junior clubs, leagues. It all goes on there. If this goes, where will the next generation learn? East Acton's accredited nationally by the governing body as a center of excellence for coaching, development and tournaments. If this were a tennis court, it'd be protected. Ealing's leisure services express regret. It's in the papers and uh, they do need to update their sports strategy. The London plan. Policy S5 states that planning presumption should be in favour of the retention of sports and recreational facilities. They've tried to divert you from it. It's there. East Acton clientele spans those in walking distance to pros. Jamie Jones, we heard, the world champion, also on ITV News yesterday. A Greek professional I spoke to there who comes every day from Notting Hill. He's lamenting having to go to Tooting and Mile End because that's the nearest after this goes. In short, to kill off this club would willfully result in the decline of the sport, which the officer report prematurely claims. In challenging times, these businesses survived the pandemic to their credit. After building up loyal customer bases for decades, why kick them in the teeth, evicting them for a hotel development whose need is unproven? Air travel is still way down post-COVID, uh, post with Zoom business meetings now the norm. East Acton is not a holiday destination. It's not getting crossrail. It's not in the Heathrow corridor. Unlike, say, this uh, boutique proposal for this town hall, well thought out, there's no named hotel operator buyer. And when businesses have asked, will there be space for them in this new structure, they're told not that you'll be able to afford. Interestingly, there is a 1932 restrictive covenant, which expressly forbids from the times of the old borough of Acton, a hotel on this site, which was designated for shopping. I don't do this lightly. In three terms as MP, it's the first time I am here, but this is important. And ignore the things about private lease terms. The committee tonight has a choice between saving a community asset 
or allowing carte blanche to develop for a speculative hotel. Let's listen to Historic England, who talk about reusing and retrofitting buildings rather than demolition to reduce carbon emissions and waste at a time of net zero. Let's embrace council good growth policy and not throw thriving businesses under the bus in our haste. This has been snuck up on everyone in August. Let's not pass this dud of an application. Uh, Rupa, your opposed time is by up. our yeah. neighbouring Labour borough, Hammersmith and Fulham, yeah. Ealing Civic Society, Parliament's All Party Parliamentary Group for Snooker, and both the EPSA and W. Your time is up. Snooker World English. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Yeah, English and world variations of sneaker. Yeah. Thank you. Right. Chair, okay, we're we going to get some, some responses before we go to any more questions. Any response on well, section five or anything, Emma, or before we go to the question with the members? Um, a few responses. Um, uh, in response first to. How about this? This is better. Um, in response to the the first objection, it is very, very important to remember that this is a class E designation. It is not a sporting or a community use designation. It is not protected as such through permitted development rights. It could be turned into anything within class E. This is very important to remember. This is why it is unreasonable to put forward a condition which would require reprovision of a commercial use at another commercial site. Um, uh, it's, um, it's also important to note that while uh, London Borough of Hounslow and Fulham did object on highways grounds, TFL did not object on highways grounds. Um, and London Borough of Hounslow and Fulham does not include this building in any of their character assessments of the heritage value of their conservation area across the street. Um, the, the data that is used in the report is from 2021 assessments by Sport England and from reports from the central government on snooker provision across the country. So they, they, are, they are up to date. Um, and the GLA needs assessment does indicate Ealing as needing to provide hotel rooms. Um, and so there isn't a need for hotels, hotel rooms in the borough. Um, I would also, I, it's important to note as well that our current sports strategy does not include um, snooker within, within that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Emma. Yeah. Any question? Uh, oh, right. Pastor Hamidi. Thank you, Chair. Uh, my question, I just need to get some clarification about the boundary treatment to the back of the building. So are the developers um, providing, are they gonna be um, tidying the fences? And just clarification on that, please. Before we go, is there any other question? No. What's the colleague? Yes, my, my question is that shouldn't consideration have been given to protect retail space? My other question is that you're saying it's Class C. I do understand that, but the fact is at the moment it is a snooker club and this facility is not, it's, it's suitable for the elderly as well as the young. And um, I, 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 I don't think there is any other facility nearby which matches this facility. So um, the other thing is that I, I, I think the assessment can you please clarify the depth of the assessment which was done um, on this building? The, the other thing which is concern, the other thing I have a question about is that based on the right-hand side elevation, the height is rising by four meters. Yes, you know, let's not talk about the apex of the building. Based on the right-hand side elevation and the impact that is having on those, I'm not, I'm not, I've forgotten, is it two or three residential properties? Is it two or three? Two. Yes, and 
because the distance between their rear window and the existing building is normal. But having all those windows looking down, I know they're going to be obscure glazed and you have in, you, you, there are, but the bulk, the bulk of the building, the mass of the building is the concern. And I think it's, it's, and the overshadowing effect on those two properties. Right, sure. and, and my last concern is regarding the highways. The pickup and the drop off is a major concern for me. In fact, I, I'm concerned that there's a great danger that someone could get injured if they take the risk of dropping or picking up a minicab driver or anyone, if they drop them off the main road. This drop off and pick off at the rear, I, I believe it's not suitable. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Professor Kali. Yes, Emma, so the, the height, uh, Prospo, just, yes. you have no... So thought. starting at the beginning in terms of boundary treatments, uh, there are several conditions in the uh, decision which require details to be submitted for boundary treatments, uh, though the baseline is a timber fence for all the boundaries, so the boundary to the rear adjoining those properties on Brassy Avenue, as well as a boundary treatment to the north. Um, so all end along that access road with an improved gate at the end of the access road to be, pre present a uniform appearance there. Um, so firstly, the boundary treatment question. Secondly, in terms of retail space, some retail space can be protected if something is a designated shop frontage. In this case, it, it is not. So there, there is no protection for this um, retail space in terms of policy requirements. Um, again, it, this is similar to the answer for pr the protection of the snooker club. While we understand that it is, it is in a community a loved community asset, it is not designated as such. And this, this makes protection of it not possible in pos policy terms. In terms of the depth of assessment that was done, uh, the applicant agent and ourselves as planning officers have done an in-depth assessment over, over many months based on the snooker needs assessment, based on hotel needs assessments, based on transportation uh, assessments as well of the site. The daylight and sunlight reports have been submitted. Um, there, there's been a robust assessment, and this is all outlined in the committee report. In terms of the height increase, um, would it be all right if I share my screen again, just to, to show images for context? Yes, please. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so um, here we have the images of the um, current boundary wall. So we want to think about development on a human scale. What does it feel like to be a person um, standing and using this amenity space? Now, a four meter increase in height on an existing two story um, building with with higher than normal internal floors is quite substantial. There's a higher than normal two story flank wall over there. It is, it's not seen that a four meter height increase insofar would increase the feeling of the mass. However, there are elements in the actual proposal which move the building back from this shared building line further back than it currently is. Uh, we can see that. One second, I'm just going to go to the ground floor plan. Here we are. Um, this, you can see here along number one, the the boundary treatment is up at the is up at the boundary there where that increase will be, but the internal space is now set back from the rear boundary walls of number one and number three, which is why you'll find in the report in the overshadowing section it actually shows that number one is going to experience less overshadowing than the current proposal. Um, so this is one element that the uh, application incorporates in order to reduce the feeling of the mass, as well as important factors like taking off all of this plant equipment, which makes substantial noise, uh, the aircon unit and the flu extract for the uh, hot food takeaway location. Um, in terms of windows, so we're still on this slide. Um, 
a louver is different from from film insofar it is actually a physical boundary so you cannot look down whereas obscure glazing you would still be able to have some sort of view these elements are built into the proposal so that the actual view is completely obscured and uh, residents cannot or guests cannot look into resident spaces highways there is uh no pickup and drop off to the rear uh it would all be done in the existing bays uh to the front in terms of taxi pickup and drop offs that being said again the ptel rating is very high and we expect a lot of coming and going based on public transportation and with the safety contributions result um that focus on traffic calming increasing uh, the safety of junctions and protecting pedestrians at those junctions. We think this would be a very, very good way of improving road safety on site, not just for hotel users, but just for the general public. Um, I believe those are all of the key questions. Well, thank you, Emma. And uh, yeah, Councillor Ball and Councillor Allen. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, so uh, returning to the the current snooker, snooker needs assessment that's being carried out. We've heard quite a lot of criticism of that. Um, how would you respond to the um, the timings to alternative uh, facilities being clearly wrong from what we've we've heard um, from, from both the objector and from Councillor Crawford and from our Member of Parliament? Um, and also the, the point that they made about uh, the nature of alternative procedures not being looked at. Uh, I mean, if we're doing any sort of other sports assessment, we would distinguish between a full size um, football pitch and a five a side pitch or whatever. So, it, it, uh, wh why is why was the um, why are the nature of the alternative facilities not being properly differentiated between? Them? Thank you, Councillor Ball. Councillor Arden. Thank you, Chair. Um, Councillor Ball's taken. Uh, my first question, so I won't repeat that part, so I'll wait for that answer. That is a concern. Um, just to go back to Councillor Coley's um, point, um, I think the concern that I would have had would have been that um, the passenger pickup and drop off would be on the on the side rather than at the front. Um, there is, I know that place area very well, grown up in that area. Um, and I do see that there is that's where the buses turn and and that's there's railings there. And um, so was consideration given there. Um, and secondly, which actually um, is a matter um, more of a question rather than uh, a requirement through policy. But as there has been a, a real uh, concern with residents about the uh, loss of the snooker club was any questions as the as a planning and our planning department raised about any substitutions within the site or was that just not an an application or was the application just taken as what was given thank you thank you Kosala. emma could you address these two questions um okay sorry um Sorry, uh, Emma. Um, and the other point, other question I had, I can come back to that or I can add that on, was about the construction management plan and how the vehicles would be actually, what the timing and how the arrangements will be so that the residents are least uh, disrupted on the, uh, well, whilst the development is taking place. And also during the servicing, once the, app, the uh, property is developed, during the servicing, will all uh, servicing be done within the back of the rear of the property or because it's difficult to turn around? I fear that a lot of the servicing, uh, especially refuge bins and everything else and big, bigger trucks that will come with deliveries will actually park on the rear and not go into the service road. Um, so well, what 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 pr protection will we have there? Thank you. Kosovo Anand, this is a very crucial question, and that's my question as well, too. It's a very crucial and very busy location. So what is the sort of what sort of uh, construction management plan we have on that? Thank you, Emma. OK, um, so starting with the snooker needs assessment, um, the snooker needs assessment was submitted by the applicant in November 2021 when the application was being prepared to submit um, for the formal application. There really isn't a way for 
that data to be more relevant or new considering the application must be submitted. Um, the needs assessment needs to consider planning matters uh, in terms of what we respond out in a report and um, the quality of the facilities provided considering that this again is a commercial use and not a formal sporting facility. It, it isn't a material planning consideration. In terms of the distance, I think there, again, there might have been some miscommunication. There, there's no reference to the hurricane room in King's Cross. It's referencing the hurricane room in Collindale. Um, and these um, times were based on uh, just established uh, um, Google Maps and you know distance traveling based on the two areas north and then those south. Um, again, it, that being said, it's not a material planning consideration. It is just there for reference and, and, and uh, yeah. Um, so passenger pick up and drop off. Uh, there won't be passenger and pick up and drop off on Brassy Avenue. Um, that has been outlined uh, specifically in the report. That's not going to be happening. It will just be on Old Oak Common Lane. Um, that is in the report. Um, in terms of the loss of the snooker club and its free provision within the site, we understand that there were informal communications between the applicant and the agent, but the uh, proposal that came to the um, department at pre-application stage, as well as at the formal application stage, didn't include the provision of the um, snooker facility in, in the on site. Um, and, uh, construction management plan and demolition management plans are all um, preconditioned and need to be submitted. And in, in the description of those conditions, it clearly outlines that we'll need very strict details on when deliveries can happen, when works that create dust can happen, all of the standard conclusions in a construction management management plan and demolition condition, when uh, vehicles can move to and from on site. This condition will be consulted on with our air quality officer, our noise officer, highways, transport, as well as TFL. Um, so there will be uh, multiple eyes on, on that document when it is submitted. In terms of the servicing arrangement to the rear, there are track diagrams, both in the reports submitted by the applicant as well as in the report. These tracking diagrams show the movements of the vehicles, the box vehicles, as they come in and out of that um, servicing uh, area to the rear, as well as the driveway itself that is inset. I'm sure we can probably see that here. Here we go. So just that's where servicing will happen there with the refuse bins and they will come out like this. And there are track diagrams in the report that show that is possible. That being said, uh, servicing, delivery and hotel operation condition is also required uh, in pre-submission, uh, uh, in pre-commencement of the proposal. Uh, and again, this will outline key times, um, the types of trucks used, hours and uh, noise control for those areas as well. Going to mention obviously that the briefing notes um, incorporate uh, a slightly amended condition which deals with the deliveries and servicing, and that was to pick up um, some additional um, uh, mitigation in terms of operational needs of the hotel to ensure that personnel um, from the hotel use the site surrounds, uh, i.e. the servicing area in appropriate manner and not to impose any additional impacts on nearby residents um, so that was the condition that we um, amended as part of the um, recommendation in your briefing notes so we need to approve the recommendation on sure. thank you uh, um, thank you emma uh, sure. no so uh, you're not allowed we are in the no, question and answer session yes. so uh, uh, you you have have given you I'm uh, an three minute presentation. Said, I just want to clarify. Oh, we, oh, we could come back to you on that, but at the moment we are doing question and answer. Yeah. Okay, Councillor Kumar and Councillor Martin, please. Thank you, Chair. I can't actually see this, please. I've got the, the floor plans on it still. I think the slide's still on. So, but I will, it's going now. I tried to message. Okay, great. Thank you. I think 
some of the questions or some of the points that I wanted to raise have been addressed. But when we were at the site visit, we did discuss the back area, especially the, the fencing on both sides. Um, so, I, I, you know, I'd, I'd like to know how that's going to be dealt with apart from the deliveries and, and construction, which has just been explained. Um, and, and the other thing is, I, I noted £495 as the amenity value of the felled tree, the large tree uh, that's going to be felled. Um, I mean, I'm, I think the figure's actually quite low, uh, but uh, what is that, uh, you know, the reason that it's there, what is that, is there going to be a replacement or what are the plans uh, for that area. I know that the tree is blocking uh, uh, some light, but it's a huge tree. So it must have um, a larger value than what's been given, but you know, that's what's out there. And, and I've heard all the things that everybody has said. And um, I mean, you know, the business is being impacted and everything, but I think more than anything to me, what I saw on that day at the site visit and having read um, what the papers contain, um, I just feel that, you know, the, the, the loss of the community facility to hundreds and thousands of people is, is, you know, of real value. And it's disappointing that that wasn't taken into consideration, be it a policy or not. But I think it is a facility in an area that doesn't have a lot going on. So I, I can uh, appreciate what the residents, particularly the young, and especially the, the elderly, for them, it's, you know, it's part of their outing, their leisure. Um, even if you put the sporting thing on one side, I think there is a really valued um, a facility in that area. Uh, and, and, you know, just happened to talk to, you know, uh, the, the owner of the cafe there, but I myself counted very high quality 21 tables, you know, snooker, billiard uh, and pool and, um, uh, and including a professional table. So I hadn't even seen one before. So I think the quality and it, it clearly showed that this um, uh, was a well looked after uh, facility and it was definitely, you know, adding value to the community and, and their enjoyment uh, and, and, and a respite, I mean, for sure. Um, and and, and the, 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 the what impressed me most was when I talked to the uh, to the gentleman there, just 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 asking about the tables, um, he he just said that you know the idea of a cafe being uh, maybe in the basement or whatever is is uh, is fine. But snooker, the reason that it's partitioned off is that snooker requires concentration, and and that is why it needs to have that um, uh, you know that quiet quiet area as well hence that partition in the middle so they've actually looked at everything so they are providing you know a really good facility and i think if if that is a consideration um that i mean not if i think that's what's, Kumar, what's, what's your question i'm, I'm just question, wondering will they look at um um you know uh, will, will they look at an alternative or consider having it uh, in the basement Thank the you. Okay, thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, of Martin, please. Uh, I just wanted to remind um, the committee that that's not what's at play tonight. We're looking at the scheme that's presented, which does not obviously include the reprovision of the snooker club. Um, you've come across this issue previously in other committee meetings. And yes, there could by all means be all sorts of alternative proposals, but that's not what you're being asked to look at tonight. And I think you need to bear that in mind. Um, we've given our, um, the information in relation to um, the chronology as we understand it. We understand that um, the applicants um, uh, did consider this quite early on prior to um, discussing the scheme with the, with the local authority. Um, but for commercial reasons, and um, we, you know, we will understand that, um, that has not been um, appropriate or uh, viable to incorporate into the current proposal. Um, so let's not get confused around what the proposal is tonight. So I just wanted to sort of stress that before we kind of went on to any further questions. Thank you. 
Thank you for that reminder. We will consider that application as it just front of us uh, instead of modified that application. And our, as a planning committee job is to consider it as it is. Uh, Councillor Martin. Okay. Um, um, hopefully that's working. Um, I, I just want to briefly go back to the uh, needs assessment. Um, and I think all of us uh, as members of the planning committee have seen uh, some information in the report, talks about current provision, talks about alternative provisions and where they may or may not be. Um, and we seem to be hearing tonight that actually that's not relevant anyway, because this is not a protected um, form of activity and therefore um, it, it, it shouldn't influence our decision. So I just want to we just clarify that one way or the other. I'm not quite sure why it's in the report if it isn't relevant to what we're doing, to be honest. That that that's my first point. And then a couple of other questions. Um, disabled parking. You do refer to it in the report, but I didn't quite understand exactly where it was or how far away it was from the hotel, and whether or not we're making any improvements to that um, disabled parking as part of maybe the section 106 monies. Um, and I know you're going to tell me this is um, building uh, regs or something, but um, the fire risk assessment, I was quite interested to see what it was going to say about this particular development, because especially of those two basement rooms and um, how, you know, what, what sort of fire strategy, evacuation strategy would be in particular. So if you've got any more information about that, that would be useful. Um, and then the only other thing, I'm picking up on what um, many other councillors have said, that rear access, I mean, it does seem to have a lot going on at times. Um, I think it's got the drop-offs for taxis. It's got the, obviously, the servicing of the hotel, food, other goods, et cetera, going in and out. Um, it's got the waste. It, it's occasionally might have a coach going in there. It does seem, it does seem to potentially be a bit busy. Um, and um, I can see why people might have concerns on that, both in terms of the neighbours and also in terms of the practicalities and the gate that's going up. Um, I'd quite like to know if we know yet what sort of gate that would be, because if that's constantly opening, it could be a bit of a nuisance. So if you've got any more information on that, great, thanks. Thank you, Mr. Martin. Yeah, so, um, yeah, there is no, I can't see any indication after that. So consider that, so the one more, yeah. But could you, yeah, could you, Costa Kali, could you, Thank you, Councillor uh, Tarek. Um, you've continuously said that it's Class E and um, therefore there's no protection. Now, I hope, uh, please correct me if I'm wrong. If the snooker club has been there more than 10 years, it, I hope it has been there more than 10 years. Well, I've, I've been confirmed, yes, okay. If it's been there more than 10 years, when something's used on a commercial basis more than 10 years, it does acquire that planning permission. So the fact that you're saying it's still Class E, if they want, they could put in a lawful, they could apply for a lawful development certificate and have it reclassified. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's my understanding. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Thank you, Councilor Kali. Uh, yeah, these are the final question, Doctor Emma. Okay, so we will um, begin with again the 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 needs assessment. Now, it's with all planning decisions, it's a balance between multiple factors, and we also we want to acknowledge the very real comments and objections that are coming in and give them adequate weight within a policy context. We don't wanna dismiss people's concerns or objections in any way, but we also need to pay attention to what the land use um, policy is around these, these uses. So the needs assessment was forward to show that yes, there is this uh, land use, which is specifically a commercial land use through class E, though it does also have an importance within a wider community setting. And what weight does that, is that given? What we want to determine by including that in the report is showing that while, while there is weight, 
to some of these considerations, it, it is not outweighing the other benefits and other elements of this scheme, taking all of those things into consideration, that it is a Class E use, that it is, it has permitted development rights to change into anything within Class E, um, uh, that there are other facilities for snooker and, and, and pool nearby, um, and we need to do that within the best of our ability, um, which uh, I know people have been saying that we need to be uh, assessing the quality of the tables in itself, but again, there is no policy uh, for that in terms of planning and land use uh, considerations. Um, disabled parking um, has been, I believe, um, can, there's been a contribution through Section 106 funding to provide a disabled bay in the street scene. Um, though there is an existing disabled bay on Brassy Avenue to the north. Um, so that will be the provision for disabled parking if it's needed, but um, this is, we're expecting this to be a car free development with as limited uh, car parking spaces as possible. Um, the fire strategy is again, conditioned and controlled. Um, there are certain consultations that go through um, HSC is one of the bodies that assesses if uh, what kind of fire strategy is needed and this doesn't meet their guidelines. However, there is a fire safety strategy required before commencement of the development. Um, there won't be any coaches to the rear uh, along that service area. Um, the, any coach drop off will happen at the front on Old Oak Lane. The only thing happening to the rear is servicing in terms of uh, deliveries, refuse, and that kind of thing, uh, well, as well as um, getting bikes, the bike switches back there. Um, in terms of classy use, classy use is um, uh, dis, uh, decided by a piece of legislation, the use class order, and that is determined um, and it outlines what kind of um, building or commercial premises falls into specific, which uses. So um, the, cla uh, the class of use is inherent within the, the thing. It, it can't be changed to another use because it is a commercial facility and it is a class of use. And it also, it should be noted that this um, uh, building got retrospective permission um, in the 1980s. It's just some history context um, for the snooker hall use. That was that was the permission. Thank you, Emma. Uh, yeah, uh, Councillor Martin. Sorry, it's just on page 35. It does say that the coaches will be dropping off at the rear access road, not on Old Oak Common. And I think it says the same about the taxi. Can, can I just jump in as the applicant? I, we, we've never proposed to have no. coach parking at the Yeah, uh, applicant are not allowed to. Uh, you should come to me and I'm chairing meeting, so it will be appropriate. It's not appropriate to just jump and answer this. So I request you not to speak when the members are asking question to the members are asking question to the officer, please. Yeah, uh, Emma, uh, could you clarify the, the coach coach's movements around there? Um, so it does say off street parking, uh, there could be, uh, in very, very rare cases, um, coach access to the rear, though this section does finish with, nonetheless, given the location of the pros proposed development within a town center and the type of operator, it is anticipated that the number of coach trips would be minimal. Any infrequent requirement of coach access could be reasonably agreed and with the operator prior to arrival with with access to the rear servicing area provided. My mistake, that is that is my, um, mis I've misspoken there. So if through the delivery and servicing management plan, there could be an arranged um, uh, drop off of a coach to the rear though, as the applicant has said, this this um, has not been, this has not been proposed and this would be very, very exceptional emergency situations. Sorry, the report doesn't say that. On page 35, it says the coach, coach, taxi, and disabled parking are not provided 
due to the site's constrained nature. I think it's just how it's been interpreted. So my understanding is that um, the coaches and lorries are allowed during a uh, construction period, but the heavy vehicles and coaches for the hotel will not be allowed permanently for the hotel services. Of course, Martin, so that's the clarification. So I will repeat, that is a bit confused. So the coaches are not allowed for serving hotel, Emma? They're not, they're not being proposed and they're, they're not allowed. This is just one section of the report that, that um, goes into the various options, but they're not proposed to go into the real servicing area. Alex, want to say something? Okay. Yeah, we have got... Also, yes, consequently, but consider it, it's, it's the last question uh, okay. a, in terms of class E or whatever. Right. <laughs> well judged. Well done. Emma, you still haven't answered my question. I'm asking, uh, what I'm asking of is that if it's been used for more than 10 years, the fact that they haven't applied for the change of designation is different. Doesn't it acquire, if they wanted to, they could have that uh, um, class E changed to because I don't know what I know class orders have been changed and I'm not up to, I'm not abreast with all of those I don't know I thought this would come under D first but I don't know what the new class is but they do if they wanted they could have that designation changed because they're there more than ten years can you confirm that please thank you thank you consider it as the last question Emma. Um, so in terms of the recent legislation change, there is no more class D. Class D was absorbed into class E. Because this is a snooker hall, unless it changed to a sort of, uh, it would have to fundamentally change itself. It would have to change to, you know, a, a community center or a uh, other kind of community use as designated through the, that, that class order. Because it is a snooker hall, that is its class, it is class E, and it has permission to be within that class and to act as that commercial facility. I hope I hope that is, that is clear, thank you. Just a follow up, please, Chair. Follow up of your question. Of, of this question. Um, the fact is, is that it's a snooker hall, but it, it, it is a community, it is a membership, it's a members uh, uh, place. It's not a, just that you walk in. Uh, so there's a distinction here that it's a members, you, it's a members club, yeah. uh, as opposed to just a public place like Tempin Bowling, which you can just walk in without any entrance fee, without any membership. So this is slightly different as a membership club. Yeah. Okay, Costa. Thank you for your concern. Um, that isn't relevant to the use class discussion, but also my understanding of the operations of this business is that there's an $8 fee for the use of a table and that you can also pay a membership fee for to bypass that table fee but that's just my understanding that's right uh no i can't see any any sign of any questions so uh, um any views you want you want to discuss anything else or well it's, it's there's no question but if you have got any thoughts about that before we go for the vote all right, first thing I'd like to say thank you for all the presentation which has been done. Um, some of my questions have been answered. I've got concerns about the assessment. And the other concern I have is, is about the access at the back when vehicles go in, they're not able to turn and they have to reverse back. Now there's a risk to the pedestrians. There's a risk of an accident. My other concern is 
which hasn't been clarified, that there's no stopping of a coach arriving. If a coach does arrive there, it has to stop somewhere. Right. We don't have control over that. And there's a few other concerns, and therefore I would like to suggest that we could should consider deferring this application until certain questions are answered clearly. Thank you. Thank you. Pastor Louise Brent. Can I just, I mean, this is a debate, so we could- Chair, chair if, if uh, for a matter of policy here, so, um, if, if Councillor Cawley is actually asked for a deferral, we have to take a vote straight away. No. You but, don't need to second a deferral. But we, need, we need to have a second it in terms of deferral. And I think it'd also be useful to understand what, are, what questions have not been answered. Yes, Councillor Cawley. As, as it's part of the deferral reason. Yeah. Um, I basically feel that the site is quite congested. Um, and as a councillor, we are here to make sure that if we make a decision, we're en en enhancing the environment. We're also ensuring that the public is safe to come and go from this premises. Um, I think it's an over overdevelopment on the well, the facilities, the uh, highways facilities. Just uh, 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 I don't think uh, meet the needs of this particular site. Secondly, uh, the assessment. You know that we have a policy to protect. I know it's not classified. We are not classifying this as a recreational facility. I think we a better assessment needs to be done, and that's not. I'm not satisfied with the answers I've had, and hence the reason I'm suggesting a deferral. So, do you think that answers? not clarified and satisfied to you, Councillor Coley? Yes. Well, I'm not satisfied with the assessment. I'm not satisfied with the highways. Reversing vehicle, normally if they, you know, there's no turning, they can't turn, it's too narrow. Sorry, just to get some clarification further on the question, um, not being satisfied with the assessment is quite generic and broad, um, it would need to, for the purpose of deferring, for the purpose of going to a vote, um, is there a specific part of the needs assessment that, that you're not satisfied with? Sorry, could you say that again? Yeah. Um, you, you've just mentioned that you're not satisfied with the needs assessment, which is quite broad. Is there a specific point in that assessment? Is there something that can be narrowed down to? for the purpose of going to a vote and answering your question? My concern is that I do not, I am not aware of a facility of such nature within close proximity, you know, central London or North London is too far and consideration should have been given or it might not be planning, but I think it is planning under S5, but I think the developers have not addressed this properly. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Do you, Councillor Colley, if you are not, so that's a section five. Uh, are you, who's going to, yeah, are you, he, he's happy to answer your question. The officers of officers. Yeah. requested to clarify section five. Yeah. Oh. So who is the second if you are different? Sir? Oh, you are the second, yeah. So can we go for vote for defer this application?
because but otherwise we can't come back with anything, can you? The officers have got to come back to us with additional facts if we're going to defer. True. So what are they and what we're asking for? We do need to come. No, to no, no that's Alex will answer that. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to interpret what the reasons would be, but I, Council Coley is obviously um, not satisfied with the... Um, the assessment of the principle of the development and I think he's not happy with the highways information but I'm not absolutely clear what else isn't in the in the current officer's recommendation and report given the presentations tonight um, we've also elaborated on um, the assessment that's been undertaken we've looked at the existing situation on site which is very similar to the proposal. Obviously, we're looking at slightly different uses, but we um, we also saw on site and we also recognise it's not just the snooker hall that exists on the current site. Um, we have provided information by way of the tracking information, which demonstrates that these things work. I think those are the two things that um, I've I've interpreted from what's being discussed, but I'm, I'm, I'd like to hear from the committee if there's any other reason. Also, Martin. I mean, I don't know how we're going to, um, you know, which way we're going to go on this. But um, I mean, if if there is a decision to defer, then I think what I'd like clarity on is, um, you know, what weight do we need to give to the, the snooker and pool? Um, if we are talking about the need to have an equivalent facility somewhere in the area or reasonably accessible, what is that facility? I mean, you could be comparing a, a local pool with an Olympic swimming pool. It feels a little bit like, have we done that right assessment? If it's needed, I'm, I'm still a little bit confused about whether or not we can or we should be taking that into account. Um, I mean, some of us would like to take it into account, but it doesn't mean so that we can. Um, and I think we've got muddled up because we've been trying to be helpful to the public. I understand that yeah. and, and respond, but it, it's all going, then got a bit muddled. I, agree. Well, I think it has got a bit. I think we have attempted to answer the question around um, the use, the why, why the use, um, the needs assessment was obviously um, accompanying the application. Um, we have also advised committee um, that we don't feel um, that it was necessary to do so, given the use classification. Um, we recognise the commercial um, issues, which are separate from the planning process. Um, for example, um, the the sneaker club is obviously um, a tenant. Um, the um, the applicant or the owner of the site has the right to obviously cease um, or change that tenancy in due course, and that would be irrespective of the current proposals tonight. So. Um, we've attempted to kind of take you through that process. So um, I think we've been quite clear about that, but um, that's for you to make that decision whether you want any further information. Oh, Scott Sobret. Sorry, um, I, I, you know, I, I'm, I don't want to kind of um, dumb down um, the, the details of the report, um, but I have found tonight um, uh, the question and answers um, it, it hasn't felt very clear um, and there have been quite um, considerable um, contradictory um, bits of information. Um, and so for me, I, I don't feel 100% satisfied that I've got all of the relevant information in regards to um, the needs assessment um, for the at the end of the day is a sports facility, regardless if if there's a policy for it or not, that that is what it's being used for. Um, and, you know, uh, yes, there's the black and white, but there's also grey and, and that sits very much in the grey. Um, and I know as a planning committee, we have to look at the black and white. But officers, you know, I know that you've been doing, uh, you know, uh, an assessment and this is months of work, but there doesn't feel like to me, there is satisfactory answers on that element. And I also think around the traffic management, because at the end of the day, regardless of whether, um, you know, as part of the applicant um, application, there's going to be coaches and drop offs, it's going to happen. So um, that's something that just doesn't feel like it's been fully addressed to me, um, based on the presentation and the um, conversations and questions and answers this evening. Thank you. Well, any other contribution? Costa Coley, just one please. Yeah. Well, 
wrong. Sorry. Yeah, uh, the other point I want to clear, I, I know, Alex, you said that whether this development goes ahead or doesn't go ahead, the snooker club might have to leave. I'm also concerned about that because that statement could be correct and could not be correct. It depends if the original lease granted to the snooker club is within the landlord tenants act. Sorry, Pastor Kohli, this is as I mentioned you in the beginning, this is not our part of the job tonight to, to think about what is the dealing between freeholder and tenant well, and leaseholder. So I'm requesting you, so we should, and I have said many times, I think we should not come on that point and discuss what are the rules and regulation about property uh, property laws. We are not here, we are not expert here for property laws. So Council, what, yeah, sorry. Council, if, Chair? Council, if I might, uh, um, motion to defer has been made. Yeah. It has been seconded. Um, the question that I'm understanding is in respect to highways um, in regards to the rear um, usage, if that's correct. And that's the purpose of the deferral. You want more information on that? Yeah. No, uh, so, so Chair, I think also the yes, yeah, the snooker assessment as well. I think there are two there are two reasons for deferral. It's also yeah. that members are <clears throat> unhappy that there hasn't been a, a holistic enough assessment of of, of alternative um, facilities that you know takes into account whether they really are viable alternatives or not. Yeah. So. Uh, just uh, on that point, it, it is, the information is available to the planning committee, as is, as Alex said in the beginning, and the needs assessment has been carried out, and it's up to the committee to interpret that. Um, but if the, if it's a question of the needs assessment, it would help, I believe, the planning officers to have a specific question to answer, as opposed to go doing whole new needs assessment, um, which is how it's coming across. And, and forgive me if, if that's a misunderstanding um, uh, of it. If we're talking about professional standard snooker tables and we've compared them with little pub tables, then that isn't a, quip, a real assessment. But I suppose that's what the sort of thing we were talking about, or yeah. people are thinking. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. So I think I think that's right. So I think you know officers need to assess something, looking at what are real alternatives. You know, is is this as uh, the objectors claim? You know, the only uh, facility of its nature in West London, or, or are there viable alternatives? And I think that's not clear from the assessment that right. is made by the applicant. Okay, so that's one minute. Yeah. So do you think on the basis of uh, what the committee is uh, concerned about the uh, need assessment, do, do you think that would be the, 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 that there will be a valid uh, reason? I mean, it, it, it's, committee has put that forward and we'll have to respect that. And we'll go to a vote um, for deferral on those two points. Um, so the first will be regarding the highway and the second will be regarding uh, like for like, no. not one deferral, but yeah, on the two points, well, yeah. Councillor Mohammed. Um, thank you for the officers for giving us quite in depth um, information. Some of them were clear, and some of them, like uh, Councillor Brett said, we got a little bit confused. The one I would like to add to the referral is um, the natural light impact on the residential of the rear of the, um, uh, uh, the, the proposal property. There was a mention that the initial lighting impact is actually will change and there will be more lighting on the two properties affected. So I like a little bit more information on that, what it would look like once it's built. Thank you. Thank you, Kosa. Uh, th that's that's enough, I think. So, Kosa. Yeah, uh, I'm just saying you. that we we are giving the uh, applicant a chance yeah. to amend it rather than just refuse it. So that's we, we should go for the vote now. We completely understand. We, we we will get the vote in a minute in terms of is it right? We should go for the vote now. So, Kosa Kohli, you are suggesting to differ, and Kosa Arnold, you seconded that. So, yeah. is, is that?
So, so I want to see that, could you raise your hand if you are happy to defer this application? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, um, and then that's right. Just one. Upstream. Uh, I didn't count your vote. Well, good, so, yeah. So how many then? Eight? Um, nine, yeah. including you. What? I'm abstaining. Right? Oh, you're abstaining. Yeah. Please at all. Application's been deferred then. This application has been deferred and uh, officer will work on that in terms of basis of uh, assessment, need of assessment, and other points we raised tonight. So date just one minute, meeting. meeting has not been, yeah. Date of next meeting. Yeah, which is? 21st of September 22nd. Yeah, and the meeting is, meeting is uh, finished now, and the next meeting will be 21st uh, of September. We'll see you there. Thank you so much for participating.